This is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. My goal is to help you master your own biochemistry and you can take it from there. So what I want to discuss tonight with you is the whole concept. Tonight's topics is actually going to be allergies and we're going to go over the biochemistry of allergies and why we all get them. So this is an allergenic season for sure and I have a lot of um, people reaching out saying they're suffering from allergies and I want to just go over the biochemistry of that. So before I jump into that, I just want to let you know that whenever you're listening to this and wherever you're listening to this, please comment below your city, state, and country. If you like this video, please give it a like and if you don't like it, give it a don't like. Share with any friends and family that you have as far as people that could learn or could benefit from this knowledge. So we are always here for you and we will always respond and reach out to any comments or feedback and any additional questions you might have about what I'm going to share. So what allergies mean is that your body is really revved up. Your inflammatory response is revved up and your body is filled with inflammatory modulators. So you are, um, how we experience allergies is going to be things such as runny nose and even sometimes people can get allergenic skin rashes. The majority of us get runny noses and that can even uh, translate into not being able to sleep well at night because the allergies, uh, the mucus is now running down the back of the throat. Post nasal drip is what that's called. People will get sore throats from allergies. They will also get headaches. They will get maybe little rashes around their nose or um, you know, just a lot of different things can happen. Red eyes, red itchy eyes. So what that means is your body is reacting, it's hyper reactive and it's starting to try to flush things out. That's what a runny nose is, is your body's attempt to flush things out of the nose. It is also a sign that you are having uh, what I like to refer to as dirty blood in your body and that initiates a whole cascade. And so when you think about allergies, what can you do right now today to assist yourself? Well, what I would recommend, number one, is using over-the-counter medications such as Benadryl or Zyrtec, and there's also another um, chlorpheniramine that's more of a generic uh, antihistamine, and those will help dry up the mucus. And the reason I advocate drug use in this situation, and I do in certain situations, is because the body's really revved up, and when you give it an antihistamine, you literally just say stop. Now, there are a few um, you know, other things that you can use. I know that there's great things with aromatherapy and herbs that can also be used to give that same signal. But of course, I specialize in the pharmaceutical realm. So that in that situation right now today, if that's what you got going on, you could go with Claritin, uh, Benadryl, like I said, or Zyrtec, and they're all available in generic forms. And that's going to stop the body from doing what it's doing right now, which in an allergenic state, that's important because continued inflammation is going to just lead to other things happening. So I would encourage you to do that to start. And then I want you to immediately start thinking about your gut health because what an allergenic system implies is that you have a weak digestive tract and you're going to want to look at building your digestive tract. And the first thing we want to do in that is we want to stop eating offending agents, things such as gluten, it's the number one allergen. The most likely secondary allergen is lactose. We want to go on what's referred to as an allergen-free diet, and what that is, is pretty much whole foods. Imagine what grandma and grandpa ate a hundred years ago, and they probably ate, you know, a little bit of meat, a lot of really clean vegetables, and, you know, they kept it simple. They weren't eating a lot of processed foods. So that would be what I would refer to as a clean diet. You could definitely take that into a vegan diet or a vegetarian within the same realm. You could even take it into a raw foodie diet if you really wanted to really uh, you know help your system get clean quicker and so you would start there you know again looking at the what you're intaking and then the second thing you'd want to start looking at is taking things number one would be enzymes you'd want to take enzymes digestive enzymes which would help you digest your food because your digestive tract is already wore down and we know this because you have the allergies so your digestive tract needs a break and when you eat digestive enzymes you're actually letting those digestive enzymes do the the work of digesting your food that your body normally has to do. So you take the pressure off there. The second thing you'd want to look at is probiotics. We use probiotics because we help repair and regenerate the flora in our gut. 
which has been damaged from you know various things like I said an allergenic diet things such as NSAIDs uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories Motrin, Naproxen, Aleve also antibiotics are very damaging to the flora alcohol and steroid use so what's funny uh, when we get into steroid use, we say, you know we use Flonase for allergies, and actually it's indirectly damaging the digestive tract. So we can see why that's a vicious circle. So if you're someone out there using Flonase, you would want to stop using Flonase, you know, titrate off, and start you know beefing up your digestive tract. Digestive enzymes, probiotics. Another great thing I love for the digestive tract is um, referred to as glutamine. It's a great amino acid. It powerfully repairs the digestive tract. It literally fits right in cellular uh, amino acid wise right into the mucosal lining. So a wonderful repair mechanism. There's also N-acetyl uh, glucosamine known as NAG and that would help uh, rebuild and regenerate. Another great one for your belly and your stomach when you're rebuilding is uh, licorice tea which is a demulcent and coats and soothes the gut. That, those would be all great things. Then you, as far as food, you might say, well, what can I eat? I would look, definitely look one of my favorite grains that's gluten-free and a great replacement in so many ways is quinoa. And then also looking at getting more um, you know, apples and prunes into your diet. And you also want to look at fermented foods, so things such as sauerkraut and kimchi, and I have, I have some friends that make their own kimchi, it's an amazing thing. Um, kombucha for a drink, that's a fermented tea that originates in, originated in uh, China. And now it's all over the United States, but that's a nice fermented, it has a lot of probiotics, it has enzymes, it has amino acids, and so think of it as an energy drink. It's technically a raw food drink, and it's gonna give you a lot of the things we just discussed and it's also pl pleasant to drink and so it's a, a nice substitute when you start making these changes in your diet. So I hope that's helpful and I look forward to your questions and comments. All right.